Hey, hey, good afternoon. Scott Luton, Greg White with you here on Supply Chain Now. Welcome to today's live stream. Gregory, how are we doing? Quite well, Scott. We are visiting with an old friend today, and I'm pretty darned excited about it. Oh, we're really excited. Not And not just an old friend, one of our all-time favorite guests. Um, leaders, leaders, mentors, executives, logistics pros, um, <laughs> you name it. Yeah. It's true. It is really true. Uh, and we're delighted that she'll be joining us for the first time on a live stream, right? Uh, it's really the first is time. It the first time? Yeah, on, on a live stream. You know, she's been with us probably three or four episodes. Oh, um, well, more than that, don't you think? Maybe. But never swooshed. Never she's swooshed. She's never in. been swooshed. Oh. <laughs> so uh, stay tuned That's for what's going to be. Yes, it is. It's going to be a wonderful conversation. You're going to love our guest. And love her perspective, and and you know we want to hear from you. We want to hear you weigh in on on what we talk about today. We're going to be talking about leadership. We're going to be talking about eureka moments and a, really a long tenure at one of the industry leaders. We're going to be talking about uh, new ventures and, and entrepreneurship and a lot more. So y'all get ready, get your voice warmed up, get ready to go. Greg, is your voice warmed up? Ready to go? Me uh, me 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 me. Yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's say hello. Like brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Yes. <laughs> Oh, okay. That's a new one. All right. The whole um, alphabet. The whole alphabet, right there. That that yep. That sentence contains the whole alphabet. Well, let's um, let's say hello to a few folks, and then we're going to share a couple of programming notes, and then we're going to bring in our featured guests here today. So, up at the top, the first individual, Shrinivas. Great to have you back. I hope this finds your Hi, family. Your yeah. yeah. Hope this finds your family and uh, your. Uh, your community. Well, I'd uh, love to, you know, if you can share anything in comments, uh, we'd love to um, check yeah. in and see how you're doing. So we'll, we'll touch on in a second. We're going to touch on uh, an initiative that we are uh, very proud to support. Uh, you know, you give from what you have uh, to get more uh, supplies to our friends in India. So great to see you back, Srinivas. Uh, Lee is back with us once again. Ola from Houston. Lee, really enjoyed. Um, oh, man, it's been a, it feels like it's been a while. Welcome back, Lee. And uh, he, he he was sharing a lot of uh, thoughts around reverse logistics and retail. One of the last live streams, he's, he joined us. So, Lee, hope this finds you well. Peter Bole, every night and every day. Peter, how you doing? Oh, I like that, Scott. <laughs> uh, he says four days of supply chain now in a row. Can it get any better? Man, Peter, that is a could. wonderful. <laughs> Love that. Uh, okay, I think this is, let's see here. Uh, Amanda and Clay, I think this is Kyle Reeves. Uh, so Why Kyle, does that happen, Scott? Why is it we can't see some people? And It's LinkedIn, so isn't it? It is. Security settings on their profiles. So, Oh, uh, is that what it is? Oh, I okay. think so. Yep. So um, I think this is Kyle. And Kyle, welcome back. Um Let's see here. Also, oh, Sylvia Judy is with us. So greetings from Charleston. Great to see you, Sylvia. Mohib from the Air Capital. Go uh, Shocks. Yes, Go Shocks. Air Capital of the world, Wichita, Kansas. Alay is back uh, from Sudan. Alay, great to see you. Look forward to your perspectives. Kevon via LinkedIn. The doctor is in the house. <laughs> That's right. Great there to see you. There is a doctor there. in the house. Edelise. Uh, from Mexico via LinkedIn. Great to have you with us here today. Uh, John Perry is back. John with a great sense of humor. So, John, you're on the hook. Yeah. We'll be looking for some great comments there. Yes, we're uh, looking. We're seeking entertainment. <laughs> seeking entertainment. Jill from uh, Chicago. I wonder what the weather's like up there this time of year. Great to have you with us, Jill. Uh, I don't know, but if it's as good as the food, I'm all over it. Yes, I'm with you there. The comments great, are coming. Great com food city. Comments are coming in too quick. Um, my fingers yeah. are not moving fast enough. Uh, Owalabi is back with us from Nigeria. Great to see you. Uh, enjoy our our social uh, exchanges. Gary Smith is back. Great to see you. Sheldon, big up from Jamaica. Hello via LinkedIn. Great to have you here. Okay, so for now, yeah. and, and hello to everyone else. We're looking forward to hearing your take on what we talk about here today. Uh, and let's see here. I want to share, uh, what, what's a really important project for all of us. And, 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 you know, we jumped on this morning via podcast, recorded podcast with an individual that, uh, 
born in India, raised in Singapore. Then he was, he was raised, um, he's got a lot of family in India and we were kind of, before he shared that, Greg, we were kind of, you know, what's, what's been a highlight thus far of this week, right? We, we were thinking, I mean, frankly, in, in, in maybe our isolated ways, I was thinking baseball, the Braves win last night or some of this other stuff that really doesn't mean anything. And then he mentioned, uh, how, um, how heartwarming it was for him to see the world come together and yeah. really jump on getting and helping and getting supplies to India. He really, I mean, it really was a, uh, uh, an enlightening moment. Uh, one that really brings you back to reality and, and takes you away from all the things that aren't important. So Greg, yeah. uh, what was your, before I, we talk about this here, what, what was your thoughts there? Well, you know, I have to spill the name, but I'll only spill the first name. Sean was, uh, he is very appreciative appreciative of of the experience he got living in Singapore, obviously living in India, both his mother and father, and um, and where he went to college. He was thankful to the opportunity that gave him and the first company that got him into the supply chain space. So it's really a good story as much as anything. And what he's doing comes from um, his incredibly, his incredible adeptness at engineering and technology and from the entrepreneurial roots that his, that his uh, father gave him, starting a business at 17 in Singapore, not even in his home country. Crazy. So it's an interesting story. We'll give you a chance to hear it in the next, what, couple of weeks, right, Scott? Agreed. Agreed. I think we're shooting for May 19th, but y'all check that out. Um, and, and on the same note, uh, check out these efforts. You know, there's so many great organizations. Yes right. That are getting, getting assistance to our friends in India. You, you've got two options here. Go ahead, Greg. Chef Vic Iskana was uh, on the show, which apparently I didn't know. Enrique was embarrassed that he didn't know he was famous. I was even more embarrassed because I didn't know that we should know that he was famous, <laughs> but um, a, you know, obviously doing great things regardless of his fame. Um, and, and, you know, and using his fame in a great way to help the people in his home country. And you could see uh, the conviction and the emotion that he feels in, in, you know, the situation that's going on there and in being able to help and in using us and others as vehicles to help get the words out word out. And we're glad to do it. Amen. Yeah, that's right. It's uh, part of our mission here. It's part of our our DNA here uh, to give forward and 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 uh, um, do good uh, and and really take action. Uh, so y'all check this out. Uh, it, you know, beyond other initiatives that are out there, just find one that you believe in that that's really you know the re resources are getting to the people right and rather than uh, to the the overhead. And these are two efforts that we can we can vouch for here. So yeah, one hundred percent of the money goes to those in need. That's right. One hundred percent. That's really rare. Absolutely. Viba.org, V-I-B-H-A.org. Or if you've got questions or, or maybe you've got some unique ways you can help, uh, you can shoot a note also to India at VectorGL.com. And uh, our good friends at Vector Global Logistics are doing great work to uh, help marshal things over there. Okay. So, Greg, I want to share a couple of comments on a much lighter note. I want to share a couple of comments here. Well, well hang on a sec. Mudasar says, India, stay strong. We're away, but our heart beats for you. Sending lots of love to India. So Mudasar, well said. Would love to know what part of the world you're in now. Thanks for joining us here today. Um, let's see. David is back with us. David, hope this finds you well up in yeah. Canada. Great to see you. Got that long beard on just in time for summer, David. <laughs> That's right. That's okay. okay. That's only a couple weeks where he lives, isn't it? Summer? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. Uh, maybe it, it's hockey season year round, I believe, up there. And and lately, after the Blue Jays took swept the Braves, maybe it's baseball season yeah. up there. Although the Toronto's playing down here in the warm Florida confines. So, Greg, I am so excited to introduce our guest. Anything else you want to share before we bring in our featured guest? Azuka is on. Hey. So that was a great interview azuka and real also really inspiring and a great juxtaposition of how helpful young ladies can be and how rambunctious young boys can be so we get to watch the playback of that 
just remember guys um yeah help mom out would you <laughs> well all, all you guys and so oh, Greg's mother's day is coming up so really <laughs> help her out do not miss that so Greg is referring to a live stream last week where we featured Azuka and of course our dear friend Jenny Froome. The replay is coming up soon. You're not going to want to miss it. We got a ton of feedback. One of the uh, uh, dozens of of jewels that Azuka dropped on us was uh, if you always bring if you always bring value, you'll always be welcome at the table. You know, kind of creating your own spot at that table. Had had just a fascinating hour long conversation. So Azuka, great to have you here today. Okay. So let's bring on our featured guest, Greg. This is going to be really neat. So our featured guest today recently retired from UPS Supply Chain Solutions as Vice President of Industrial Engineering. Now she started, I, I kind of forgot about this a little bit, but this is really cool. She started with UPS as a part-time hourly associate unloading trucks. So she has seen it all, and I hope she writes a book about it. So to go from there to basically running half the country for um, a UPS. Our guest continues to serve on the Dean's Advisory Board for the University of Central Florida's College of Engineering and Computer Science. And she serves on a wide variety of executive boards, uh, too many to list here. And she's really sought after, I've seen it firsthand, for her insights and perspective. She's been there, she's done that. I think, I didn't see it in her bio, but I'm pretty sure I saw it in, in our earlier uh, conversation. She has been inducted in the Hall of Fame for engineering somewhere. Maybe she, she can share when she comes home. Uh, recipient of numerous awards and recognitions across the country, certainly the, uh, the supply chain industry. I want to welcome in Tandra, uh, uh, Tandria Bellamy to the show. Tandria, how are Hello. you doing? Great, 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 great. Great to see you again. <laughs> it, it has been always good long. to have you. Yeah, it has been a while. How long has it been? Well, pre, it pre COVID. It was pre-COVID. You're correct because we were together in the studio. Yeah, that's right. Well, you've been plus you've been busy, uh, and, and who's counting? It's only been seven weeks, four days, and twenty-seven hours. But hey, who is counting? You've been you've had you had some full plates beyond you know celebrating your retirement, much deserved from UPS. Uh, your son, which which if we can talk about, entered college, and there's a fascinating story there. We're going to bring uh, Anthony on later, um, and you're jumping into a new venture, which we're going to talk about later in this show. So certainly a full plate, right? Absolutely. Keep it moving. <laughs> Keep it moving. All right. So Greg, you've got the distinguished honor of leading off our conversation here with Tandria. So you worked at a company, uh, an acronym, uh, maybe some folks aren't aware of, so I'm going to clue them in a little bit, Tandria, uh, this small company called UPS. They deliver things, I think, yeah, um, yes. right? That's that's pretty much it. Um, but but <laughs> as Scott said, you started from relatively humble beginnings, but I think you you ended as a leader of an entire business organization. So, can you tell us a little bit about that? You know, and kind of the high points and challenges and eureka moments. And you know what, Tandria, just tell us whatever you want. That works. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I started out with uh, UPS when I was in college, and at the time, um, minimum wage was three thirty-five, and I was working full time at a retail establishment, and saw the flyers on campus um, for eight dollars an hour for a part-time job and full benefits. And you know, being an engineer, understanding a little bit about math, I thought, hey, that's a great deal. Yeah. So, I went and started out as an unloader um, because I'm really stubborn. You know, they had clerical jobs and other administrative type positions. I was like, no, I'm going to go and unload trucks because I can. And that was a really good decision because that got me involved with operations. And um, I became a part time supervisor. And one of my guys, one of the sorters, a gentleman was coming up the stairs and one of my sorters yells, hey, IE guy, she's getting an IE degree. And within a couple of weeks, I was in the industrial engineering department. Wow. Absolutely. And that's how it began. So I was a part-time supervisor in the industrial engineering department as I finished. Because, my just to be clear, because of a loudmouth sorter. Absolutely. <laughs> I didn't even know they had an industrial engineering department. So, wow. But, so lesson number one, treat your people good. And yeah, no kidding. 
and they will take care of you. So I, um, I later drove, I went into full-time management. Um, I moved, and this was in Orlando. I moved from Orlando to Atlanta, I worked in a corporate office for a little while, did a little stint in marketing at the corporate office, went back to industrial engineering, and then got pushed back into the field, which was phenomenal, because I would much rather be close to the action than in the corporate environment. So I was the um, engineering director in Omaha, and then I, and in Omaha, I was responsible for Nebraska, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Kansas. And then I went to Minnesota, and I'm thinking, wait, I'm a native Floridian. Yeah. What are you're going the wrong way? Absolutely. And then I received another promotion and ended up in Chicago. So when you're talking about Chicago food, yep, absolutely positively. Okay, Tandria, call it. What what was your favorite back then? You know, I've always been a seafood lover, and Hugo's Frog Bar just had some amazing meals. Now, I really wasn't a pizza person. Yeah. There was just pizza galore. Oh, yeah. A lot, a lot of great steakhouses. I mean, you yeah. could, if whatever you want, you could find it. Polish food, Greek food, Hungarian food. I mean, everything. Italian, now, everything. Yeah. So, so you are making us too hungry. Let, let me interject. Yeah, I'm glad I ate before this. <laughs> let me interject something. Uh, that already uh, Tandri and and is it just my monitor or can y'all is is the top of that blacked out top top of that comment? Can y'all see it? I got it. Yeah, okay. no, I got but it. Oh, must be yeah. must be a setting on my end. Uh, so Lee says very inspiring. Work hard and it pays off. Luck finds those who work hard. And he and he's quoting Tandri here. Treat your people good. I'm tattooing that on my chest. You got a big fan Why already. Not? <laughs> Why uh, not? If you're going to get a tattoo, make it a really meaningful one. Really? Uh, and the bigger, the better and more painful, I'm sure. But hey, I, I love that, Lee. And uh, good morning to you, uh, Dr. Rhonda, out there in Arizona. Great to have you back. Okay. Hey, can I, uh, just one other thing, share with folks your education path to Tandria, because I think that's, that's an important part of who you are and and how you got some of the opportunities you did, I think, as well, right? Yes, my bachelor's and my master's are both in industrial engineering. My bachelor's is from Stanford, which is another story, but I grew up in Florida. The very first time I got on an airplane was to go to Stanford. I recall that. <laughs> and then my master's is from University of Central Florida, which is where I uh, was uh, honored as a distinguished alumni. That's what, and that um, Hall of Fame distinguished alum, it's very close, very close. But what a, um, clearly you've made your mark. And I think you made your mark on, on, on STEM, but also engineering. And I think that's where we initially met because you published an article, uh, touched on some of your journey and, and touched on some of the challenges we have. I can't remember what big publication it was, but that's where we originally met and, and had you in person for your first podcast, Forever Ago, it feels. It was Forever Ago. Yes, it I wasn't know. forever ago. It wasn't that long ago. <laughs> oh, hey, Greg, if you Don't said, age us all up. You can't refer to me as an old friend. True. That is true. Yeah. Old uh, is new a relative friend. term these days. Right. Right. <laughs> so, well, I, I, while we're while we're piling on, I'm going to add this to yeah. Mohib. He says, wow, I didn't know that Stanford University had industrial engineering. From you had to do day. it. Mohib, come on, man. Be nice to our guest. Nah. Uh, I want to also add this comment here from Aditya. Hey, great to have you with us here, Aditya. Such an important point to be noted. People management is one of the most important aspects in warehouse management. Have experience firsthand. It solves half your problems. Wonderful. And it does look like those comments are, are, are showing up normally on the feed. Must have an issue with my monitor. Anyway, so Greg, let's keep driving. Yeah, well, and you haven't heard the half of it, gang, because Tandria is a spectacular mentor. Um, and, well, I'll let her tell you about that. But aside from yourself, Tandria, <laughs> tell us a little bit about some of the things you've, some of the people you've encountered who have been great leaders and some of the things you've learned from them. And then, I, and then on the back of that, I would like to talk a little bit about your strong belief in mentorship. Okay. 
Well, and I didn't didn't finish out the career journey, but where it ended was as the uh, VP of engineering was supply chain. And, you know, we've come through this year of being separated from each other. As the with supply chain, it is a global business unit. It's truly global business unit. And we were able to connect via Zoom in ways that oh, right. understood what the impact was going to be. That global team became so much tighter with the pandemic than we were before the pandemic. Um, we would have Zoom calls and yes, we would disseminate much needed information. How were we going to move PPE from China to the US? How were we going to move ventilators across the country? We helped Canada move their PPE from China to Canada. But aside from all of the things that we had to do to get work done, we had such a blast. There were Halloween costume contests. We had contests on who could come up with the best background, the best virtual background. We would have themes where if we were talking about ocean because capacity got so tight, everybody would have a different ocean themed background. We had historical days and, and the boss would, you know, call on people to talk about what their backgrounds were. And so much family history came up as, as we did that. We had, you know, show us your favorite vacation. And all of these little things that were shared, all of the little things that were talked about made the business relationship so much stronger. One of the greatest offshoots of that was you know, every year we would have succession planning discussions. But most of the time, the only person who could talk about the people in their area of the world were the people who worked in that region. With this, we highlighted so many of our young and upcoming superstars, so many of the mid-level managers that everybody could now talk about what these, what the value was. What did they bring to the table? How did they interact? We had Zoom calls where we would have people from around the globe on with customers. To, and the customers would talk about what their needs were. And then we got customer feedback on how different people from around the world engaged with them. It wow. was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. And it still blows my mind that all of these people were excited to get on this call. It was held at 8 a.m. Eastern, which means it was 8 p.m. in Asia, it was 5 a.m. in California, and everybody got on this call and particip participated enthusiastically. But I think it was all of the things that we did that weren't business related that just helped to galvanize those bonds. It's, it's, it, was, it was great, it was great. So much. So Go ahead, Greg. What'd you dress up for for Halloween for the Halloween call? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I was one of the women warriors from Black Panther. So oh, under forever. Awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, I love that. Um, all right, so I got to share a couple comments because you're you're as as expected. You're inspired. Yeah, right. And people, uh, let's see here. Uh, back to Mohib. He's also an industrial engineer. Masters and PhD ongoing hardcore shocker rocker engineer. I am. Uh, Oba Lobby says that loud shout from the sorter wasn't just loud, it speaks volume about building mutually symbiotic relationships at work and off work. Good lesson here. Excellent point. Yeah. Well, Lots of great points from Ola Wabi. No kidding. Yeah, he's been on right. fire. Ola, Ola Lobby. So. Yeah. Um, I think I, I dyslexic thick it. <laughs> So R Rhonda says, I'd say management of people is the most challenging, but also rewarding experience. I've learned so much about people, myself, and the wonderful uniqueness of making things happen by tapping into our best skills assembled in a fundamental way together. What Man, that's like poetic. Excellent, excellent stuff there. All, uh, Alay says, it's, it's very challenging to have to work while studying. Well done. Managing time and stress is vital. And then one other comment here, and we're going to, we're going to circle back to a few others, drive determination and humility. What an amazing and inspirational example of a true leader. Wow. All right. We're gonna get to David and Peter on the next break, but Greg, let's drop, um, if we can find it, let's try to drop a link from one of our earliest 
interviews with Tandria. You think it, this is a great story. I mean, this is a great story, but some of this kind of the, we, we got to really get into your beginnings in one of the first calls, right, Tandria? Or we discussion. Did. We did, we did. Um, man, it's just so impressive, um, your history. You know, so, we're big fans. <laughs> tattoos, Tandria Bellamy, just like uh, Lee. <laughs> But um, so Greg, you were gonna you're gonna pick Tandra's brain around mentorship because it's certainly one of the things she's passionate about. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, you are a great leader. You've worked with some great leaders, and you've done a lot. Really worked hard to help build great leaders. And one of the things we talked about, I think it was right before COVID, was mentorship and how important that is. And I think it'd be great if you can just kind of share your view on on mentorship and how you've made it work and, you know, how to make it work for both sides and, and that kind of thing. I think that's really powerful stuff. I think first thing is you can't cook. A, it can't be a cookie cutter approach. What people need is different and you have to be really open in the relationship so that you can determine what is needed. I, yes, I've retired from UPS and my mentoring relationships have still continued. Um, I have people, they'll send a text, hey, when can we talk? And that's what we do. And it keeps, it allows them to have a sounding board, which is why it's so important to really get to know the person. Mm -hmm. It allows you to take a step back and really reflect to them what they're saying so that they can think about what direction they really need to go in. If... <laughs> For me now, most of my mentees are much younger. So it keeps me relevant. I get to see what is happening in the workplace. I get to tell them, you know what? You're just gonna really need to suck it up and work a little harder. What's being asked of you is not unreasonable. Or I get to say, that really wasn't the right approach from that person. I need you to, to express yourself in this manner. Let's role play it because there's a lot of things that people just don't know when you come into an environment um, that you haven't been in before, that you don't really understand the culture, you need a sounding board. You need someone to help you grow. And now what's being really rewarding is to see some of my mentees that I've been with the longest that are starting to mentor and to watch them and their approach. <laughs> one of the, the, the greatest full circle stories is one of the gentlemen who I started mentoring him when he was an intern and in his in his 20s. Now he's in his mid 40s and he's serving as a mentor for my son. So, oh, so, wow. Yes. I mean, just it's, it's, it's phenomenal. So uh, a couple of comments here. First off, you know, Tandra, you may already know it, but, you know, Greg, y'all share that. Y'all are both wonderful mentors and have a passion and a great knack for it. So I love to hear both y'all kind of talk about it, but um, Greg, I'm gonna give you a chance to, for a follow-up question around mentorship because I want Tandria next before we, we move forward. I want, I want her to share what her son's up to, but, but stick yeah, with mentorship. That's, that's, I, I'm glad, I'm glad we're going there. That's, that's the gotcha question, Tandria. <laughs> that's true. So, it is true. Um, well, I mean, so I, I think, well, look, I don't remember what episode it was. It's probably 312. Peter, I think, dropped it in the comments on LinkedIn. But we talked a lot about that. And I think, you know, one of the keys that you pointed out on that particular show was it's not just learning for the mentee. It can be, like you said, it's remaining relevant. It's gaining knowledge of, of where people are at. Um, but, um, I, and I know there's lots more that you could say there. But I, I have to ask this question. Sorry if this, this is a little off. You saw a lot of change at UPS. Yes. Right? I know you started when you were three years old because you're about my age. So if you worked there for 37 years, you must be 40 by now. Um, <laughs> so, so, right? Right. Absolutely. Uh, yes. So... so so when you think about, uh, and I know we didn't really talk about this, but when you think about some of the changes it, it, in this moment, what immediately jumps out at you as kind of the changes you've seen either in the company or in supply chain or, you know, in leadership or, or whatever over, over that time span? Well, I guess I'm really going to date us now, but 
I mean, just everything that's going on and the everything being digital now. When I started as a driver, we were recording on paper still. Um, pieces of paper with carbon paper. And you may have people in the audience that don't even know what carbon paper is. Right. <laughs> And you know, you mean with actual carbon in between the sheets? Yes, yes. Okay. You had to have a copy that remained in your operation and a copy that went to our DI delivery information loss prevention department. Because if someone wanted to file a claim and needed to know if a package was delivered, people actually had to go into files and find the delivery sheet for that day to pull it out to say if the driver delivered it or not. Now, literally pull it out. I mean, when you think about this, the terms we're using are still used, Tandria, but when they when people think files, they're talking about a, a file folder of a document in their computer. This is somebody going through a file cabinet. Yes. Right? And oh. actually having to dig for a piece of paper. A yeah. of paper. How did we survive that? And <laughs> And, and that's the thing, you know, when you think about all of the things that we have today um, and then you think about things that went away and we always t think about technology and reducing jobs. Technology has allowed so many things to grow and bring on more jobs. You know, all of those people who were going through and looking for a piece of paper we now have them doing things that are much more customer focused, much more value added. Yeah. But we still are employing more people than we did back then. Right. Right. But just everything that has gone on in the digital space. Um, now we're starting to get, you know, more involved with AI, more predictive analytics, more, more automation, more more of things that are just keeping UPS moving forward and 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 pushing it into the future. Hmm. You know, for me, I never thought I would see today that we would have a CEO from the quote unquote outside, but to see Carol Tomei come in and the tremendous growth that we're seeing in the stock price as based on some of the things that she is doing around value pricing and and just I mean the sky is the limit. Seeing the role that UPS has played both in, like I said earlier, the movement of PPE, now the role that we're playing in, in moving the vaccine. We recently um, had a, 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 a drive of, well, in-kind services where we uh, moved a lot of oxygen to India. So just seeing all of the things that we're doing, everything that's going on around sustainability, the amount of um, autonomous vehicles that we're having. You know, mm. we've got a partnership with Too Simple. We've the uh, the growth of Flight Forward, the whole drone mm -hmm. of UPS. It is just absolutely amazing the things that the organization is doing. And again, you've just got technology and digitization that's at the at the forefront of all of it. Yeah, I agreed. All right. So changing gears a bit, I want to share a couple of comments and then we're going to circle back and, and uh, briefly tell us about what Anthony is up to. Cause I think this is really cool and important for uh, fueling the talent pipeline across global supply chain. But first going back to what we we're talking about earlier, David says team building is so important, especially in this new social distancing climate that we're all living in. Great point there. It makes it more challenging. David uh, Peter says recognition is as simple as a genuine note, letting them know, they are appreciated. Excellent point. Gary says, Tandria, I also worked my way through school too, Georgia Tech. It really makes you appreciate your education. Excellent point. Peter, hey, thanks for the feedback. He says, three former show links they dropped in the comments with Tandria search feature is excellent on the new website. Hey, I appreciate that. You're making all of our day, especially Amanda's. Um, let's see here. Um, speaking of Amanda, she says she also worked full time through school, even completely paid back all my student loans not too long ago. It definitely makes me more appreciative of my education. And Sheldon, you must know Sheldon uh, Tandry. He says, creating a great safe space where team members can share doubts is great. Tandry, I forgot to mention her PhD in business <laughs> psychology. How about that? 
Um, gosh, you so much. I'm gonna wrap with this one here. Myra I think says, you just got. I think you just got a, a d- new degree conferred upon you. You're welcome. Hey, I'll take it. Yeah. Only at supply chain now, Andrea. <laughs> We need to confer honorary degrees here at Spotchat. We'll work on that. That's a great Next. idea. Where would you like that degree to be from? And I'll start the printing press. <laughs> Triplicate, please. Uh, yeah. Myra says, uh, worked 39.5 hours, couldn't be full-time as a student employee, took 15, 18 credit hours while raising two young boys and completed my degree in three years. Not only did it teach me an appreciation of education and mentorship, but it uh, but taught it indirectly to my boys. How about that? Now, that's a perfect segue. So Myra, all of y'all, thanks. <laughs> Mic drop. All of y'all, thanks so much for sharing. And Myra, that's impressive. So speaking of children, I know you've, you've said it here and elsewhere that you know, two of the biggest things you're most, most proud of, biggest legacy, Ruby and Anthony. So Anthony in particular, we were, when we caught up last week, he's doing some really, he, he's basically living his passion at the college age, which is such a great thing to be able to do, to find it and then that young. And especially since his passion isn't drinking every single night. That's <laughs> that's, right. that's particularly encouraging. And now, Tandria, he has he has evolved or elevated from the boy, which you'll have to tell people what that means, to what do we have to call him now? Well, we're calling him a very impressive young man, but it and <laughs> Never mind, I won't go there. Um, <laughs> so my son is um, a freshman at Middle Tennessee State, and he is in their aerospace program getting with a major in professional pilot. He is actually going to be a pilot and is loving it. In fact, I was in Tennessee uh, Tuesday, Wednesday to go and pack him up and bring him home. I thought I was bringing him home, but all I brought home was all of his things and two so su- two suitcases of dirty clothes. Of course, laundry. Yeah, <laughs> because he still is going to be able to take get some more flights in, and he said, "Oh, really? Opportunity to to fly again over the next couple of days while everybody else is finishing their finals." So, um, the great program. He actually got in the cockpit this semester so as a second semester freshman he will finish this semester with his private pilot's license wow Uh, the way the program is structured is phenomenal he this semester he had um aviation weather as a science class so instead of meteorology he has aviation weather he had aviation laws and regulations so he is getting a full education of course Hmm. So has to take math and English and history and economics and all of the other classes for your general ed. But all of his major classes will be things that are directly tied to being a pilot and um, being in that in that world of a- aviation. So he will come out with a full pilot's license as well as a bachelor's degree, which is just phenomenal. I love that. And, and what yeah. I learned in talking with Tan- uh, Tandry last week even more importantly, is that within industry, especially within, you know, the pilot industry, the airlines industry, the program at Middle Tennessee State, right, right. Um, is very highly respected and it's right. been a, a valuable pipeline for quite some time. Yes, yes. Our chief pilot, his name is Houston Mills. And that was someone that I reached out to as soon as we found out about the school. And his response was they have an excellent reputation for turning out undergraduate pilots. Um, Delta Airlines has a program with them called Project Propel. So Delta, knowing that there's going to be a lumen pilot shortage, is getting in at the collegiate level so that they are they're doing some very, very early recruiting. Excellent. So point. Andrea, when we're not calling him Anthony or Captain, can we call him the pilot? We can call him the pilot. He's graduated <laughs> from the boy to the pilot. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Or as Peter says, yeah. and what you shared from Boyd, a very impressive young man. How about that? Uh, let's see. I think T squared, I believe uh, you're by Morgan. I think you're referring to Morgan state university. If I'm not mistaken, T squared, he says, Morgan wore him out good and I'm better for it. Excellent. Um, and he also adds work study definitely makes you appreciate balance. Great yeah. point there. Um, and then Kavan uh, is kind of referring to what you were sharing earlier. There's a little bit of delay on the comments and the stream, but uh, Kevon says technology changes jobs. It does not replace them. 
And he says, hashtag human ro uh, robot collaboration, industry 4.0, industry 5.0. We're moving fast, I tell you. So, but almost every single time it elevates those that that it's it's job it takes, I guess, when you, when you think about automation or technology, it elevates their performance, it elevates their job satisfaction, it, it oh. elevates their ability to earn. Yes. Um, so it, it's powerful. You know, we talk about this all the time. And frankly, Tandria, that that whole conversation around technology and automation taking jobs, that's our generations and our parents' generations thing, right? Because these new generations, they expect automation. They don't want to do the yeah. boring, mundane, dangerous jobs that automation can do. And, and they're right. Excellent points. Um, okay, so let's shift gears. So, uh, so uh, Godspeed and best wishes to Anthony Thank wherever you. you are right now. Hopefully, we have you uh, join us, and, and you can tell us your journey. As is you he going to fly home, home after he's done? <laughs> Pick up mom and off, off to the beach. Um, so let's let's shift gears. Let's talk about this cool venture that you um, are part of now, yeah. called Tommy Run. So tell us more. Um, Tommy run is, is funny. Tommy run is the opposite of being automated because it's there in a space that not a lot of last mile delivery companies want to play in. Um, Tommy run delivers construction materials. It can be um, anywhere from we have independent drivers who if you go and want to buy five bags of concrete and really don't want to put it in your vehicle, you go out to Tommy Run and say, I need you to pick up my order and bring it to me. That's that's one service that we do. You can go out on Tommy Run and actually order um, supplies from Home Depot, Lowe's. They'll go and pull it and then deliver it to you. Whether you're a contractor, maybe doing home renovations, you're a DIYer and you don't want to pick it up yourself. They do um, partnerships with like Dixie Supply, where they may be moving construction materials from Dixie Supply to Home Depot, or Brand Vaughn moving doors and windows from Brand Vaughn to an actual home construction site. So just about anything that you can think of moving, not the large, large quantities that you know require 18 wheeler, but smaller quantities where you don't want to move it yourself or you don't want to have your contractors, your builders leaving a job site to pick it up because there's an opportunity cost for that. When you don't want to do it, let Tommy Run do it for you. I <laughs> love that. And folks, uh, you can learn a lot more at TommyRun.com. So check it out. You know, I, I always love how um, when folks depart a, a, a fulfilling, successful corporate career and then they they find themselves engaged and, and helping out early stage companies and sharing all of this stuff you've accumulated, you know, been there, done that and share it with folks that are, that are building the next big corporation. I think, I think there's so much value entrepreneurs gain from, uh, from folks like you, uh, Tandria. And so I'm in a lot because, you know, I've been in corporate America, my entire working career. So to see a business being built and a lot of the obstacles that, that you run into um, is very enlightening. It's very enlightening and gives you yeah. a completely new appreciation for small business owners. So I watch what you have done, what you and Greg have done, and how this is building and growing. And and I applaud you for sticking <laughs> in there because it's so valuable what you do. Well, I appreciate that, uh, Tandria. And yeah, Greg and I have, have talked about um, the earliest of days uh, when, we, <laughs> when we had a uh, we didn't have a truck. We had a hand truck and that was our mobile and a, studio and a Honda Accord. All right. <laughs> Honda Accord. That's right. Um, Let me tell you something, a little something about logistics, Tandria. Anyone who can fit an entire studio in a Honda Accord. Uh, oh, that's true. That genius. is true. And we've Absolute got pictures. Genius. <laughs> we've got some pictures that we have not uh, stashed away one of those filing cabinets you were talking about earlier. Um, but nevertheless, I, I appreciate that. And it's all about growth and, and challenging yourself and having a great team surrounding yourself with, with people that are much smarter than you are that, that are just as passionate, if not more passionate and, and want to, uh, uh, make the mission happen, right. Get the word out, 
uh, support what we should be supporting, giving back, um, you know, being the change we want to see and, and, and really sharing the spotlight we've been building with people just like you, because you've got a voice that, that our global community really needs to hear. So we, we've enjoyed it selfishly, you know, uh, uh, you know, in, in this side of our conversation, that one. So it's really rewarding and fulfilling to have you join us here um, across all these social channels. So, well, in Dan, this space, Scott, sorry, just this, yeah. this space, this lat, last mile delivery, what do we talk about more than last mile delivery? E-commerce. And that's about it. And last mile delivery is a big part of e-commerce in any case. So this space is really, really coming on. I mean, uh, you know, think about Tommy run companies we've heard of bring part runner and others who are doing this. And in large part, it's because the big carriers have left big openings for some of these things with very high rates. And of course, there are hundreds of scenarios that you can't put in a brown or white and purple truck. Sorry to mention those guys, Tandria, have to give equal time. Um, but um, but you, know, the, you have, have to have some specialized vehicles and you have to have some incredible flexibility to be able to do that, right? You can't always do that if you've got a route to run. Right. Sometimes, Tandria, you have to turn left. <laughs> so, so much to talk about. So little time. Peter loves let Tommy run do it for you. What a great advertising pitch and jingle, right? It rolls right off the tongues. Uh, Jenny Froome is with us. Uh, Jenny was sharing, I guess she just met a young man here in Joburg who does this. Uh, I think referring to a similar platform. She's yeah. going to send him this awesome message. Excellent. Jenny, hope this finds you well in South Africa. So Dave and, uh, Dave and Peter, uh, to your comment, Greg, earlier about, you know, uh, automation and jobs and the set and the other, David and Peter were, were debating, uh, the automated checkout lanes. Uh, and, and ultimately, uh, as they went back and forth, uh, let's see if I can find it here. David said it was better when they had 20 checkouts and only one lane open. Remember those days? <laughs> Um, but those, I'll tell you these days you go into, you name it. We live right around the corner with, with, from one of the largest grocery stores. They've got two ends of these automated checkout lanes. Everyone wants those, whether they have a buggy full of groceries or three items, they want those lanes. And, and there's a psychology lesson there somewhere, but we'll save that for a, a later episode. I was, um, uh, I was, a, I was not a fan of, of self checkout because I thought if I'm going to check myself out, Either I should get paid for my labor or I should get to pay less for the groceries. So I resisted for as long as I possibly could. And Man. they were just so terribly inefficient in the in the human operated. They broke me down. <laughs> you just down. that just sounded like my Facebook feed. That little, the last little 20 second sound bite you shared there, Craig. I've heard that a lot. Um, but that they will eventually break you down, right? Technology does. Let's read this comment from Aditya. Uh, technology will enable us to focus more on business and operations excellence. It might have impacted repetitive activities, but that is for good. That will push forward new avenues to be discovered. And then one more comment, and then we're going to keep driving here. I believe this is Kyle Reeves, Amanda, and Clay, correct me if I'm wrong, but he had a little endorsement here. Being in the building construction material industry, I could see Tommy Run being such an advantage for contractors in bridging the gap at between the building sites and our retail distribution centers. Excellent point, Kyle. Tandra, right I mean, on if time, you can right? keep hammering, why would you get in the truck and go pick up a delivery? Absolutely. Right. <laughs> That's Absolutely. right. Okay. So let's do this. Um, <laughs> David says, I asked a couple of times for a supervisor to key in my employee <laughs> discount, Craig White. Oh gosh, I love that. I know that's that's rude, but yes. I like it. You gotta maintain a sense of humor That's during right. these, these challenging times. All right. So broadening the discussion back out. So again, folks, y'all should check out uh tommyrun.com uh, for more information. But let's 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 go global here. So when you, you know, as you reflect on your career, your transition, what you're you know, where you're spending your time now, what your son's up to, all and all the things we're we're fighting through right now, what's a um a trend or an issue, you name it, that you're tracking more than others? Hmm. It's well, one of the things that is still extremely concerning, and we've talked about this a lot, and now with this new venture, um, it comes up just as much, 
is this looming truck driver shortage. Mm. You know, they're talking about that there are going to be gasoline tankers that won't be able to move this summer. Can you imagine what um, that could do to gas prices if the supplies are just so short because they physically can't move the gasoline because they don't have truck drivers to do it? Yeah. And, you know, I love what's going on with Middle Tennessee State and how they're actively building pilots because it doesn't seem to be as much opportunity from a military standpoint for a young man to get all of these hours in and flying is expensive. So to have a program like that, you can see how it is addressing a need. Yeah. Where are programs like that for truck drivers? Why don't we have industry involved in setting up some truck driver schools? You know, we've talked before about not everybody is destined to go to college. Truck drivers get paid really well, but they need the CDL licenses. They need to be able to get experience in. You know, at UPS, we have a progression that we do. You come in, um, most people enter into part-time ranks. Then you can become a part-time driver um, where, you know, the vehicle size doesn't require a CDL. And then you move up to a bigger vehicle where you may have a CDL. And then you move into being the long distance driver, what, what we call feeder drivers. So we have an internal progression and we have a broad base of employees to draw it from. But that's not the case with most places. So what is industry? How can industry get collectively involved so that we can create a truck driver pipeline because we need it desperately. That could be one of the things that single-handedly drives prices up. That could create an inflationary spiral that we don't need to be in. So just continuing to monitor that space is something mm. that was top of mind and remains top of mind. Excellent point. Uh, yeah, it is. Gary says, um, are we seeing sign-on bonus with truck driving recruiting? What's the future for recruiting? Excellent questions that uh, you know may go unanswered in many ways, at least effectively. Uh, any thoughts there, Tandria or Greg? U.S. Foods is advertising, at least in the Atlanta area, a seven hundred and fifty dollars signing bonus for drivers. Yeah. How? how so, did you, where'd you see that? That, you don't miss nothing, I had, Greg. I had a I'll commute yesterday, so I listened to WSB, which is, uh, you know, why do you listen to WSB? The weather and the traffic, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> and apparently U.S. Foods adverts. So <laughs> there you go. U.S. Foods free. No, no, yeah. no advertising there. Um, so so I think it will happen. I also think, look, autonomous automation, whatever you want to, talk, to call it, um, it's inevitable. It, it, it's, you know, um, my feeling, Tandria, is that we can't, we can't, from a human standpoint, solve the, the driver shortage because the younger generations, they don't want to do it. They just don't want to do it. And, um, you know, I, I'm still, I'm still staggered by that aspect of it. Again, we talked about, we'll not talk about education, but I'm still staggered by the aspect that kids will go to school and get a $40,000 job out of school rather than go to a technical school and become a plumber for 90 or $150,000 or a truck driver for 90 or $150,000 or, you know, whatever, some of these trade jobs that are worth so much money yep. um, and are, and many of which are in Is that how you say that? Wow. You can't be automated. However you say that word. <laughs> <laughs> I usually make up words around here, Greg, you're, you're, yeah, you're, you're taking like my job. You're like, you're <laughs> So, uh, well, Tandria, that's so much to talk about. I really appreciate you bringing that issue up. It's so important, yeah. you know, beyond the, uh, truck driver shortage, you know, always reminds me of recognition, you know, global, global supply chains move. Sure. There's a ton of technology, a ton of automation, a ton of new innovation, but man, people make it happen. People make it happen. Whether you're driving trucks, picking products, uh, you, you name it and retail, you know, we're, we're kind of picking on the retail uh, checkout lanes a little bit, but still think of all the people in your, in your just your local grocery store that 
you know, enable that customer experience stuff on the shelves, you know, uh, check out experiences, make it happen. So, um, so Tandria, God, we blink and the hour is gone. I hate it. We'll have to have you back, but how can folks connect with you and Tommy run? LinkedIn is the uh, easiest way to connect with me. And I've actually seen a couple of requests come in to get connected, which I will take care of as soon as I'm done. Um, email uh, tbellamy at tommyrun.com if you um, so desire. But uh, LinkedIn, I'm, I'm very active on. Wonderful. Wonderful. And I tell you, you will want to compare notes and beyond with Tandria. We've, we've, we've been, uh, we've been very, um, uh, we've benefited from all, not only the shows, but we, we've been fortunate to collaborate with Tandria on some other projects, uh, award shows and, and initiatives, veterans initiatives, you name it. And Tommy runs hiring. So be sure to connect with Tandria. Okay. Hey, so can we mention the, can we mention the founders, Tandria mentioned the founders of Tommy run? Cause I want to point out something in my best Southern. I, I've learned it. Ain't none of them named Tommy. So. <laughs> so Bernard Parks, BJ Kerr, and Jimmy Patel. Mm. Okay, well, we got a Jimmy at least, so that's good. Bernard Run just doesn't there. quite roll off Bernard the tongue. Doesn't yeah. Doesn't do it. I guess Bernard, Jimmy, but, but that's a whole nother business, Bernard Parks. Yes, Bernard Parks. That's it. Tommy Runs. So, Tommy Parks. Runs, Jimmy Drives, Bernard Parks. That works. Oh. Oh, <laughs> so it's too much. We're having too much fun. This is illegal. Too much fun. Hey, uh, really quick, Mike Roman. I, I saw him interact with us on this live stream via Facebook. He is a, you know, Tandria served on our uh, local Apex Atlanta executive advisory board, as did Mike. Uh, he's done a lot of veterans support work. He's one of our favorites. So Mike, if you're listening, best wishes to you and your family. Okay. So uh, Tandria, really appreciate your time. Congratulations on this next chapter. Thank it's so you. exciting. We hope to have you and Anthony back. We'd love to hear it first, you know, hear it in his words, you know, what get, what, why, why is he passionate and, and what his vision for what's next uh, is. So we'll have to have y'all both back. I would love to do that because that way I may find out what his vision is. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, Tandria Bellamy. It's <laughs> wide on a clear day. Let me assure you. <laughs> it's 10 miles plus. 10 miles plus. Uh, well, thank you so much, Tandra, and we will have you back really soon. All the best. Thank you so much. Thanks, All right. Tandra. Thanks. Right. Bye-bye. Man. Okay. There, there's, uh, so that was as good, at least to us, maybe, maybe the two of us, the only ones that we really enjoy. We're getting a lot of comments, but we knew the three of us getting together, you know, talking shop around, uh, you know, a ki kitchen table as the analogy use oftentimes greg but but we love tandria and love her perspective so um i want to share a couple, we had a couple follow-up comments um you know around truck drivers ron just says is there a shortage i keep hearing different perspectives about this topic tights uh tight on changing requirements seems to be another hot topic so so in other words how tough it is to change those requirements uh for allowing more people probably in the pipeline uh, Charles says driver shortage is a topic discussed yesterday here in probably North Washington is my guess. Uh, Charlie, uh, I'm sorry, Charles, correct us if uh, we're wrong there. Jenny, w so there. sorry I was late. Great reminder to set that reminder. These, these sessions are so full of amazing information and people. Thank you. Well, Jenny, we agree. And you help us bring, you know, you're the one facilitated Zuka joining us. And we look forward to our next series with you and the SAPIX team. Um, okay. So Greg, what was your favorite part of what we heard from the one and only Tandria Bellamy? Tandria showing up was my favorite part because, you know, I think we both, first of all, I, I just admire so much, so much of what she's done with her career, but man, how often do you get to talk to somebody who has been in such a, uh, had such an incredible rise in their career and has been such an incredible leader who is so personable, just so personable that you could actually joke with them like that. I'm thinking back to our first live stream, Scott, where I might have gotten punched in the face because th that person was sitting right next to me and literally could have done it and probably wanted to on our very first live stream. Um, but, you know, just to have somebody be so comfortable with themselves to, that they are themselves and 
we got a lot of what we got before. We just got Tandria, right? And there's no corporate veneer there. There's no putting on airs. There's just co comfortable confidence in her excellence. And, and at the same time, a lot of humility. And, and mostly the most important thing that you get from Tandria is that willingness. It's more than willingness, that obsession to share, right? And to help improve other people, help other people improve themselves. And it's a no BS style too. So I love that. Excellent point. That's just a few of the things. Just a few. 18 <laughs> items. Uh, right. Stuff. But 17, <laughs> 17 pages of notes. Andrea in the green room. <laughs> Mohib says, that was a great session today. I agree with you, Mohib. It kind of, we kind of um, wide ranging, but you know, when you got great people, you, you got to you gotta go off topic sometimes. Kavon, same thing. Appreciate that. Rhonda, I really appreciate your comments. Sylvia says, so inspiring. I never worked at UPS uh, Supply Chain Solutions, but was at Fritz Companies. Uh, love to hear the great culture. I agree. And we are way off here. Northwest Arkansas, Charles says. So we're about four or oh, five man. states off. Bull Charles, hey, before Northwest we wrap. Arkansas, that is a beautiful part of the world. Yes. Uh, before we wrap, Charles, if you want to share uh, your top two or three key takeaways from that driver discussion, we'll try to share this on the share that on the tail end of this this live stream. Gary says, "I appreciate your perspective on this topic, as I am a hundred percent vested into healthcare supply chain. If we can't hmm. get supplies, it affects patient outcomes. Serious business. Great topics as usual. Mm -hmm. uh, appreciate that, Gary. You know, we're, we're looking to." Um, I have a lot more discussions around healthcare supply chain. So Gary, maybe we have to chat uh, after today's uh, conversation. Okay. So Greg, we want to remind people once more, uh, folks, if you don't get involved here, find a way to, to help uh, give from what you have, give small as great as Greg suggests, give big, all points in between, you name it. But there's two ways here that we're supporting. We're getting the word out. Our friends at Vector Global Logistics are leading and marshalling resources and, and helping to coordinate it. You can Literally get, moving goods, yeah. That's right. Yeah. India at VectorGL.com. And then what Greg was talking about, Chef uh, Vikas Khanna and, and a team are leading this nonprofit response. that they're, they're managing dozens of projects, boots on ground in India. And you can support their efforts and learn more at Viba.org. So whatever you do, just find a way. Just find a way to help out. Lots of folks are suffering, and the third wave is uh, essentially arriving as we chat here. So, David, I appreciate this. Uh, hopefully, you can see this, Greg. Best conversations and learning from them come when you let them evolve naturally. Uh, great show. David, excellent point. Completely agree. It reminds me of our our one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, David got, gave some great um, uh, perspective from his time on uh, in a production environment and in, in, in the, the manufacturing industry. So David, hope this finds you well. Okay, Greg, as much as I'd like to uh, swoosh Tandria back in and, and keep <laughs> snuck out another keep hour. Going. Yeah. We have got to sign off for now. So whatever it takes folks, whatever it takes, jump in, jump in the good fight. Let's help our friends uh, in India uh, on behalf of our entire team here. This wraps a very busy week of live streams. I think this is our fourth one this week. Um, wow. Save the cleanup hitter for last uh, in, in a sense. Uh, but don't worry, you, you hadn't seen the last of Tandria Bellamy. So <laughs> uh, all the best to all of you, wherever you are, to our dear friends in India, uh, Srinivas and others, hey, hey, we're, we're with you. Um, and most importantly, though, whatever you do, do good, give forward, be the change that is needed. And we'll see you next time right here on Supply Chain Now. Thanks, everybody.